Hello, you are watching New Vision TV News. I am Rathina Seja. Now on Wednesday, the Army arrested the former Inspector General of Police, General Kali Kaihura, together with four senior police officers with whom he worked closely while he was at the helm of the police force. Security sources revealed that the arrest of Kaihura and his colleagues is in connection of the assassination of Assistant Inspector General of Police and a police spokesperson, Andrew Felix Kawesi. Here is the full story. The June 13th arrest of General Kalekai Uhura must have brought one end six months of silent agony that he has been undergoing trying to figure out when the blow would land and where it would hit from. For since the military started arresting his closest officers, the Foster General, being a clever man, must have known that his time was up. The month of March is not a very good one for senior Uganda police officer. On March 15, 1989, a former Inspector General of Police, Kasimo Bura, was hanged in Luzura Prison Gallows following a death sentence handed to him in 1981 by High Court Judge Benjamin Odoki for murdering Samson Dungu, a Kampala businessman who owned a Delight Cinema in 1973. Obura shot the handcuffed Dungu in the head at Naguru. It was in March 2017 that police spokesperson, Assistant Inspector General of Police, Andrew Felix Kawes was killed execution style near his home in broad daylight in a Kampala suburb. And it was in March 2018 when Uganda's longest serving IGP, General Kale Kaihura, was sacked just three months after starting his fifth contract as the country's chief keeper of law and order. So far, Kasim Obura holds the record of the disgraceful end of an IGP. The nature of charges Kaihura will be facing in the military court martial will determine if he breaks Obura's record or not. Kaihura is likely to face a number of charges, but the army may choose to charge him with only one, which would be deemed serious enough to earn him a capital punishment. The one most publicly anticipated case is about the murder of AIGP Andrew Felix Kawesi. Even if Kaihura is not accused of planning and executing the murder, he would be charged as accessory after the act, which is disgraceful enough for the chief keeper of the law. Kaihura would also be charged with kidnap if he's charged jointly with his lieutenants like Nixon Agasiri, who are already facing charges of kidnapping refugees and forcefully handing them over to a foreign power. Kaihura could, however, also face the highest crime in the land, that of treason, if the army chooses to charge him with treason over the activities of serving a foreign power for which the refugees were being abducted, then he would face a mandatory death sentence. But to avoid diplomatic issues with a foreign power, the army can still charge Kaihura with treason over creation of armed private armies, like the Boda Boda 2010, which was carrying firearms and was allegedly receiving military training. This would also be a ticket to a mandatory death sentence. But the process which is now unfolding could last several years. For even if the court martial finds Kaihura guilty, he can still appeal to the High Court, Court of Appeal and Supreme Court. Moving on, the family members of slain member of parliament for Rome municipality retired Kano Ibrahim Abiliga have condemned police for linking Obon County MP Cops Hassan Fangaro behind the chaos that broke during the reception of the bodies of Abiriga and his brother, Said Congo, speaking to the press on Wednesday afternoon in Arua town. Haji Swale Draku, who is MP Abiriga's brother, said the youth who acted rowdy self-mobilized themselves to hijack both bodies. He said the different groups that stormed Arua airfield demanding for the bodies should not be linked to MP Fangaro, but government should undertake investigations without pointing at leaders. He said the youth groups in Arua and other groups loved Abiriga and could not imagine their MP perish in such a gruesome murder. In other news, a Land Commission of Inquiry chairperson Justice Catherine Bamgamirere has said the government geologists who justified 132 billion shillings is Samba Padam Rock. Compensation is criminally liable. A tough talking Bamgamirere made the remarks on Tuesday when the acting director of the Directorate of Geological Survey and Mines, Zachary Baguma, testified at the inquiry public hearing. She said one of the terms of reference of the commission was to make 
make recommendations pertaining to civil, administrative and criminal sanctions against persons found culpable for wrongdoing. Baguma was the lead author of two unauthorized 2014 rock valuation reports. The geologist assessed the claims of the former MP of Untenger County South, Tom Baz Kaziwe and Entebbe Town Clerk Charles Bag Magumba, which gave 132 billion shillings worth for rock and sand. And in our sports news, the 2026 World Cup will be held in the United States, Mexico and Canada after FIFA's Congress voted overwhelmingly on Wednesday to back the trio nation joint bid for the tournament and leave Morocco to miss out for the fifth time. The North American bid collected 134 votes to the 65 for Morocco. One Congress member voted for neither bid. The 2026 event will be the first Expanded tournament featuring 48 teams up from the current 32 team tournament. You're still watching New Vision TV and in our daily Pearl of Africa series, we take a look at Kitagata Hot Springs. Now, did you know that there is a hot spring in Uganda where residents bathe from at the same time, draw water, and drink it? You will know why this happens after watching this edition. Chitagata Hot Springs is located approximately two kilometers southeast of the town of Chitagata, an urban center in the Shema district. The spring is divided into two and one part is believed to have been used by the former king of Ankole, giving it its name Echomgawi or belonging to the king. And the other spring is believed to have healing powers and is known as Mulago, named after Uganda's National Referral Hospital. The activities that take place here are bathing from the warm water, boiling of eggs by the locals, and also drinking the water. The water is said to warm up to 80 degrees Celsius. These springs have become a must visit to Ugandans visiting the district for the first time, and also the tourists from abroad. Now, for more Pile of Africa stories, visit our website www.newvision.co.ug. Our newspaper, The Sunday Vision, is also another home of adventures. So grab your copy every Sunday for Pile of Africa stories. And that's all we had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch my news updates and other programs here on New Vision TV by visiting our website.